Yo guys, Half Alpha here, and in today's video we're going to be watching EDG Viper play Jinx. If we take a look at the lanes, we have Jinx Lulu and we have Lucian Yumi. Viper starts Doran's Blade this lane because he wants the HP and the survivability for the Lucian lane. Jinx scales better than Lucian, and Lulu scales equally to Yumi. So if we think about it, Jinx scales better than Lucian, and in this lane, because Jinx doesn't have any immediate kill threat and it has an enchanter support, she should just farm and outscale the Lucian. So in this replay, we can see that Viper bases on the third wave to get a cull. This is referred to as a cheater recall because Lucian can't punish Jinx for this base. The wave is going to hit the tower and it's going to be difficult for Lucian to clear the incoming waves before Jinx gets back. Buying a coal here is really good, not only for the sustain that it's going to give you per attack, but also because it empowers your win con of just farm to outscale the Lucian. Now after Viper walks back to lane, you can see how he starts to slow push a ginormous wave into the enemy tower. You can also see him gating Lucian away from XP and gold from the wave because he knows he's more powerful because he's already had a reset. And although this might not reward him with a kill, it will reward him with chip damage on the plates and also deny Lucian farm. There is one kill in this lane and it's when Nocturne ganks the Lucian. We can see this being a reward for Viper's wave management though. We can see that the wave is pushing into Viper, giving him safety and making Lucian have to walk up or lose this minion experience in gold. I don't really consider this a lane kill, but this is something you should be looking to do. Viper ulted towards the Herald fight and got an assist and obviously helped his team out. The game kind of devolves now into skirmishing and we're going to start to look at how Viper actually plays out these fights. There's about to be a big fight in the bot lane, which starts off with Viper actually misplaying. He takes a lot of damage from this Lucian ult and it puts him on the back foot for the whole fight. However, he does play pretty well, but his team do carry this fight. We can see him use his ult here to follow up on the Nocturne and he's always trying to stay at max range as possible. And the second misplay of the fight is him walking into Zed's shadow. However, with all the damage that he's already put out, his team is able to clean up the fight. Now after a little bit of farming, Viper chooses his mythic. Does choose Gale Force, but just a reminder, this is a replay from 12.7 before the Gale Force nerfs. This is from when the most current and meta build was Gale Force Rapid Fire Cannon, which has currently shifted towards Kraken Slayer and PD. However, the reasoning is good to know, and I think the reason Viper chose Gale Force this game was because he's dodging a lot of key enemy spells. Enemy spells such as Ari Charm, Lucian Ult, or Yumi Ult, similar things like these. He's always playing at max range to people who are scary to him. Specifically, if you pay attention, he's always max range from Ari and Zed, which are the two most scary champs to him. And if Aatrox gets too close, he waits for the most damaging spell and flashes it. So we're going to watch a fight that looks very, very dire for Viper and his support at the start, but quickly turns into a successful fight. If we take a look here, it looks like Viper and his support are very, very caught out, but actually Nocturne ults and Poppy instantly TPs to the fight. Zoe then swiftly follows and the enemy team start to back off. However, it's already too late because Viper hits his ult and Lucian dies, so now they're at a numbers disadvantage. On top of this, Viper has Jinx passive, meaning she's going to be the highest damage threat on both teams right now. Next, we just see the killer instinct from Viper as we see Ari get chunked out by Zoe. He gale forces under the tower, but he sees this as a calculated risk because he's got his team with him and the tower's low. He can't really get bursted out right now because he has Lulu with him. By the time the next team fight breaks out, we see the same principles being applied. We see him trying to ult. Although failure here, he tries to assassinate or help damage to get an assist so he gets his passive off. From this position, he doesn't have his passive, so he has to still play back. So he double uses the Aatrox and just tries to get as many autos in as possible on him and eventually does kill him. He uses his Gale Force like this to try and deal damage because he knows that having his passive is more valuable than having his Gale Force in this fight. We see him now kill the Aatrox and use his passive to get poke shots on the Ari and the Yumi. This is great because he has an incoming wave and they're going to try to take the tower. The poke here makes it so that Yumi and Ari don't really want to walk up and he just gets the tower and the inhib for free and runs back. We can still see though in these fights that he's still using his range as an advantage. Because his team took the inhib, they have priority over the mid wave with super minions. So this means that he can posture more towards Baron. We see a fight break out in the mid lane with Lulu dying. Viper's team kind of split off to clean up the fight. However, we see Viper just dance around this Aatrox. We see a really, really nice flash from Viper dodging basically all of Aatrox's damage to him. If Viper would have been caught by this, it could have actually made the fight very difficult for 
for Viper's team to clean up. After this, Viper's team decides to go Baron and we get to see a Baron fight play out and we get to once again see these principles applied. The first thing to notice is Viper prioritizes getting his passive and staying at max range. If you notice that he's standing over the wall of the Baron pit and using rockets because he doesn't want to be in range at all of Aatrox. From this position, he can basically avoid all the damage in the fight. We can see how he's avoiding Aatrox because he's just outranges him and he's avoiding Yumi ult. Viper sits back, auto attacks Aatrox and gets his passive off. We can then see Lulu kind of griefs. Viper puts himself in a position however to capitalize on it. He almost kills them, just slightly miscalculating the damage, but overall a great fight and Viper's team now have Baron. So we get to see one final fight where Viper just applies the principles simply and just wins. At the start, we see him poking out the Aatrox and Lucian, just in rocket form, max range, just applying little bits of chip damage just before the fight actually occurs. The fight then actually kicks off when we just see Viper instantly at max range. He uses his chompers just to block off a path for Aatrox to walk towards him so that he knows he's safe from Aatrox and can continue to just auto attack him. Pops his passive and we instantly see him start rocketing down this Ari at max range. Like throughout this whole fight, Viper's been untouched because he's just he's just out of range from everyone. Like what can they actually do against this? He's used his tools so well and like even now he's attacking the tower instantly because he wants to obtain his passive. We then see just a slow clean end to the game and Viper makes it look just so easy. If you can apply some of these principles that EDG Viper uses, I'm sure that your jinx will get better and just overall ADC if you're playing long range ADCs that will attack. That being said, thanks for watching. I enjoyed making this video and I hope to make more. If you guys appreciate these videos, videos or enjoy them please drop a comment like subscribe if you're new here check out some of my old videos it might be kind of cool but yeah thanks for watching i've got